Hello and welcome to Rock's Garage. I'm your host Jason and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a factory style light kit on this Club Car DS golf cart. Before we get started, let's take a look at what's included with the light kit and the tools needed for the job. For this installation, I went with part number LGT-375. It's a factory style headlight and taillight kit. Included in this kit is your passenger and driver side headlights, your taillights, your headlight template, your taillight template, fasteners to attach the wiring harness to the cart, screws to attach the taillights to the cart, and your wiring harness. Now let's take a look at the tools needed for the job. The tools that we are going to need for this installation today are masking tape, safety glasses, a tape measure, marker, scissors, 13 millimeter open inner wrench, center punch, an eight millimeter quarter inch drive socket, a quarter inch drive ratchet, 15 30 second drill bit, a Phillips head screwdriver or Phillips head bit for a drill gun, a drill gun, and a jigsaw. Now let's begin with the installation. Now before you can begin with this installation, there's a couple things that you need to do first, and that is to make sure that the key is in the off position, the tow run switch is in the tow position, and you have disconnected the positive and negative leads from the battery pack. Also, I want to note that this light kit runs off at 12 volts. So if your cart is similar to this, meaning that it has an 8 volt battery pack, you're going to have to install a voltage reducer, which I have already done, and that card number is VOLT-0001. The first step of this installation is we need to make the cutouts for the headlights and taillights on the car. Now to do that, you gotta start with cutting out the templates provided in the kit. Now that you have your template cut out, the next step is to position the template on the cart and attach it with masking tape. Now as you can see on the template, there are areas marked for the body line. This is to help you line it up. Once you have the template taped onto the cart, you can mark your cutout area with a marker. Now you have your cutout area marked on the passenger side of the cart. You want to remove the template carefully, making sure not to rip it. Then you want to do the same process on the driver's side of the cart and mark that cutout area as well. Now that you have the cutout areas marked on the front of the vehicle, the next step is to apply masking tape around the outside of the area that you marked. This is just to provide a little bit of protection while you're cutting out this area for the headlight. Now that you have the tape in place, you're ready to cut out the area that you're going to be installing the headlight. Now to do this, you can use either a jigsaw or a rotary tool. I'm going to be using a jigsaw today, so to do that, I'm going to take my drill and drill bit and drill out the four corners of the areas that we have marked for the headlight. This will allow me to cut around these corners without going outside of the line. Now that you have the area for the headlight cut out, you want to take some light sandpaper or a light file and just go around and clean up the edges. Once you get that done, you're going to take the headlight and do a test fit just to make sure it fits in there well. If there's any spots where it hits or it won't allow it to go in, 
either take the jigsaw or if it's just a little bit, you can take the file or sandpaper and take some away until you can get the headlight into the hole. Now that you have test fit the headlight and you know it fits well, you can now go to the passenger side of the vehicle and repeat the same process. Now that we have both the holes drilled for the headlights and we have test fit them and know that they fit, the next step is to permanently attach these headlights to the cart. Now before you can do that, you also you have to remove the protective tape that we have previously installed. To do that, just take out the headlight, remove the tape. Once you have that done, we can now permanently install the headlight. Now to attach the headlight to the cart, you first have to remove these two mounting brackets here and here using a eight millimeter socket. Now once you have these removed, you can reinstall the headlight into the mounting hole. And taking one of your brackets and one of your nylock nuts, reinstall them onto the back of the headlight. Now once you have both of your mounting brackets tight on this headlight, you want to do the same thing onto the passenger side headlight as well. Now that you have the headlights permanently installed on the cart, your next step is to repeat the same process for the taillights. That includes everything from cutting out the template, positioning and taping the template onto the cart, marking the cutout area, taping around the cutout area so you do not damage any part of the body while you're cutting it out, cutting out the cutout area, then test fitting the taillights to make sure they fit properly. Once they fit properly, you can permanently install the taillights. Now that you have test fit the taillights and you know that they fit properly, we're going to hold off on permanently installing these onto the cart at this moment. What we want to do is we want to run the wiring harness first and get the leads from the wiring harness to come to the taillights so that way we can make the connections and then we can permanently install the taillights. Now that you have the headlights and taillights fitted to the cart, the next step is to install the push-pull switch from the wiring harness onto the dash. Now as you can see, this dash is an aftermarket dash, it's a carbon fiber one that we offer part number DASH-005A, but the installation process is still going to be the same as if you were installing it onto the stock dash. Now the first thing you have to do is disassemble the push-pull switch. It's as simple as just taking off the knob, then the nut underneath that with the lock washer. Now this is ready to be installed into the dash. 
Now your next step is you need to drill a mounting hole for the push-pull switch in the dash. Now there's no right or wrong place to mount the push-pull switch. It's really up to your preference. So with that being said, I'm going to mount this push-pull switch about an inch and a half to the right of the key switch. So with my tape measure, I'm going to measure out an inch and a half, mark it with my marker. Then knowing that the center of the key switch is about an inch and a half from the bottom of the dash, I'm going to measure up an inch and a half and make my mark. Now where those two marks intersect, that's where I'm going to take my center punch and make the hole to start drilling. Now using a 15 30 second drill bit, I'm going to go ahead and drill out the mounting hole for the push-pull switch. Now that you have the mounting hole drilled, you can install your push-pull switch into the dash. And put your lock washer down first. And then not to tighten it up. Once you get that hand tight, you can install the knob. Now that you have the push-pull switch installed, we can start installing the wiring harness. The first step of the installation process for the wiring harness is you want to remove the seat bottom from the cart, which I have already done. Once you have that done, you want to lay the wiring harness out next to the cart. Now the white connectors on the harness are for the headlights, and if you go farther down the harness, you're going to find that you come to a split, and these are your positive and negative battery connections. And farther down, at the end of the wiring harness, you have your red connectors, which are for the taillights. So what I like to do is just lay the harness out right next to the cart. That way you can see how everything lays. Now when you're installing this harness into the cart, the first thing you want to do is get the taillight connectors installed first. The short end is going to go to the driver's side taillight, where the longer connection is going to go to the passenger side taillight. What I'm going to do is just insert the wiring harness into the fender well and push it down to the rear tail lights. And for the longer tail light connector, I'm gonna run it across a cross member of the frame and do the same thing as I did for the driver's side and run it down the fender well for the rear tire. Now that we have the tail light connections run to the tail lights, the next step is you want to run the main body of the harness down the frame rail of the cart where the factory harness lays. What we're going to do is we're going to push the whole harness, excluding the positive and negative battery connections, through into the bottom of the cart. Now that you have the rest of the harness pulled through and extruding the bottom of the cart, we're going to run it along the frame rail underneath the cart and up into the dash, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now you're ready to run the wiring harness to the dash of the vehicle. If you're working on a stock cart, stock ride height cart, you're gonna to want to raise the front of the cart up, securely place it on jack stands, and also make sure the parking brake is engaged and the rear wheels are chopped so you can get access to underneath the cart. Because this cart has a six inch lift installed, we fortunately don't have to do that. Now when you, when you run the wiring harness under the vehicle, you want to run it along the frame rail, and up over the front cross member in the frame. Pull the wiring harness through. And from that point in time, we're going to run it up the front side of the frame. It's going to go behind the steering column and the steering box. We're then going to run the wiring harness to behind the dash. Now, once you have the wiring harness run up behind the dash, you want to take the plugs for the headlights and run them over the storage compartments in the dash towards the headlights. So that way we can make the connection to the headlights. Now that you have the wiring harness run from the taillights down the frame rail to the front headlights and to your key switch, you're now ready to hook everything up. Simply just connecting the connectors for the headlights, the taillights, and the key switch.
Now that you have the wiring harness connected to the headlights, the taillights, and the key switch, we want to do a test to make sure that everything works properly before we button everything up. Now on this cart, obviously we, it's a battery cart, so we need to hook this wiring harness up to a voltage reducer. I already have that installed. It's part number VOLT-0001. And to connect this wiring harness to the voltage reducer, I had to replace the ring terminal that's on the negative side of the negative wire coming from the wiring harness with the male end butt connector. So I'm just going to connect this to the harness, I'm sorry, the voltage reducer. And taking the positive side, I'm going to hook it to the positive end of the two batteries that I'm using. Now with that touching, just pull on the switch. Looks like we've got headlights and we've got taillights, so we know that works. Now that we see that the headlights and the taillights work, the next step is to button the wiring harness up underneath the cart. When you're securing the harness underneath the cart, you want to use the supplied zip ties that comes in the kit. Now in the front end, you just want to make sure the harness is out of the way of the wheels and any of the steering components. In the rear of the cart, you want to make sure it's out of the way of the wheels and any part of the rear suspension. The next step is you need to permanently attach the taillights to the car with the Phillips head screws provided in the kit. Now once you have the taillights installed, the next step is to hook up the positive and negative leads from the cart to the battery pack. Now that you have the positive and negative battery connections hooked back up to the battery cart, your final step is to reinstall the seat onto the cart. Now that you have the seat reinstalled, if you're working on a stock ride height vehicle, you need to remove the jack stands from the front of the cart. If you're working on a vehicle like this one with a lift kit, this wraps up the install of this factory style headlight for this Club Car DS Golf Cart, part number LGT-375. Thank you for joining me today at Rock's Garage. Please enjoy safely.